Oh. How is everybody? It's this. You would think the mic would just come out the stand. It doesn't come out the stand. How is everybody though? For real, I want to know. Woo! Yeah. I'm glad you're here. Tonight I'll be auditioning for the role of Amy Schumer's boobs in the video you saw. <laughs> Oopsie doopsie. But I do like this top, so it's great. I also put on lipstick, not remembering I uh, have to wear a mask. So I'm killing the game right now. Absolutely doing great. I think we should all say fuck COVID on three, just like cathartic release. Are you guys with that? Can we do it? Okay. Ready? One, two, three. Fuck, fuck COVID. COVID. I'm so glad y'all did it for real. There was a moment in my head where I was like, oh my God, if they're just all quiet, I'm just gonna have to go sit down. <laughs> so thank you, I appreciate your support. Now, as a reward for playing along, I'm gonna tell you about the time that I interviewed Joaquin Malfers, better known by his stage name, Waka Flock of Flame. <laughs> yeah, that one, yeah, uh -huh. you're laughing, you know. Uh, we'll go back to 2014. I was a 19 year old, young, intrepid, bright-eyed reporter with zero talent in interviewing and limited social skills. And I was working for a paper that we will just call the uh, Schmidiana Daily Schmuden, right? <laughs> yeah, so uh, my editors sent out this pitch that was like, it's Little 500 week, respond to this email and you'll interview Waka Flock of Flame. So I'm sitting in my dorm room going, golly, like I'm the newsie or some shit. <laughs> golly, wouldn't it be crazy if I got to interview him? So I replied. And next thing I knew, I had a date and time set up to meet Mr. Flame, <laughs> Mr. Flame, at the Dunkirk. Rest in peace, you dirty, filthy, <laughs> sticky, sticky bar. <laughs> uh, a lot happened, like a lot. So much that next week, if I'm around, I'm gonna tell you guys exactly how I got to this interview. Two hours late, in a hotel room, wearing a blazer and a press pass made of printer paper, <laughs> like a real reporter. Uh, but I will tell you about the actual interview, because Waka Flocka Flame is six foot five. So when he wedged himself through the Jack and Jill door of the room I was sitting in, like all six feet and five inches of him, I was like, damn, I didn't know they made humans that size. But he was so nice, like super cool, stuck out his baseball glove that was a hand, but I thought it was a baseball glove. Um, he was like, how are you doing? And I shook the pinky of it, and then we got started. It was great. Uh, he sat down on a bed, and by sitting down on the bed, we were eye level. It was great. It really did not feel like an imbalanced power dynamic. International rapper and uh, me, 19-year-old intrepid reporter in a blazer. But I do want to share with you some of the amazing things that he told me in that interview. I hope you don't mind, I, uh, I take my quoting very seriously, so I brought the article with me. Uh, so, you might be wondering, what was her first question for this world famous musician? I will tell you. Can you tell us a little bit about your musical career so far? What do you like about it? <laughs> and he responded, quote, what I like about my musical career is that I'm the most turned up, excuse my language, motherfucker on earth right now. <laughs> For real. He continued on, he talked about how he evolves in his career. So me, thinking off the cuff like a real reporter, said, where do you get those ideas for this evolution? And I'm convinced that how I sounded. I, no one will tell me otherwise. I must have been like a ma like Minnie Mouse out there, like <laughs> His response to that amazing question was, quote, it's God, cause this shit's not human what I do. <laughs> so it's gotta be God. It was amazing. I had one more question planned for Mr. Flame and it went a little something like this. What are your plans for the show tonight? How do you think it's going to go? Cause not only did I think this man had ever planned anything, I also thought that he was a psychic. And he responded, loosely coherently, quote, My plans for the show tonight? I can't lie. I really want to see how the night's going to play out, because I really don't have any plans. I just come. I come, I fuck shit up, and I leave. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to throw it in the ring. You guys can tell me how you feel. But I think I come, I fuck shit up, and I leave should be the slogan for this year. <laughs> it feels right to me. He was way ahead of his time with that one, right? I responded to him, any fan favorites you're going to perform? He said back, 
ever the deliverer, quote, I come, I fuck shit up, and leave. Me, not getting the fucking hint, and not yet realizing that I was never gonna be Katie Couric, said, is there anything you like to perform specifically? His response, quote, once again, I come, I fuck shit up, and leave. Now, if having that little taste of this truly Pulitzer-worthy interview that I really did in real life has left you wanting more, I am more than disappointed to report that uh, this is still on the IDS's website right now, <laughs> ensuring, ensuring that I will never have a career as a professional writer, uh -huh. ever. But that's all right, these things happen. That is about my time, but before I go, I'd like to leave you with some more from Mr. Waka Flocka Flame, circa 2014. Flocka Valley 2 is on the way, man, and it's time to turn the fuck up. <laughs> Thank you so much.